A Twist in Time, Chapter 24, Sorceress's Revenge. Time had passed since Miara's desertion from the Horde. One way or another, Shadow Weaver had vowed to get that feline brat back at any means necessary. She released the troops to scour and search for the Hapmonium Princess. Meanwhile, Hapmon was getting ready for the annual Moonlit Festival. The queen herself had planned a surprise for her wife and eldest daughter with a dance performance. With the royal dancers, spring had settled in as the weather had begun to warm. Miaraya had been accepted back as the next succession to the throne with open arms. She had grown accustomed to her life as an amputee, though deep down the princess wanted nothing more than to burn the sorceress alive. Your Majesty, are you nearly ready? Your mother, the Queen, requests your presence in the banquet hall. A young royal maid, about the same age as Miaraya, bows as the princess had put on her royal evening wear. A beautiful black dress with golden silk ribbons and jaspers, along with orange diamonds decorating the golden trims. An orange and red veil connected to a golden hairpiece that adorns the princess's head. She turns to the maid and smiles. Tell mother I am just about finished. I shall join in the feast once my makeup is finished. She turns back to her mirror as she finishes the final touches to her evening wear. Miaraya's orange wings lie neatly on her back. They had grown quite a bit since the princess's return. She was in that awkward phase of life, adolescence after all, growing to become the next queen after her mother. The glow of torches make the princess look almost elegant. As she walks, her long veil floats behind her. Her mother was dressed in a similar outfit to that of her daughter. The two of them would have to perform the Dance of Unity before the festival can begin. Nyaraya bows to her mother, as was tradition of their people, before the dance can begin. Drums begin to play as exotic music as the royal mother and daughter dance. Nyaraya's hands glow as flames form in them. She makes the shape of a phoenix dance around her mother choice that of a dragon. As the two dance, a glorious display can be seen. After the dance, the festival begins with a display of fireworks and dancers. Food was plentiful, as salted meats, fresh fruits, and juices filled the tables. You did great, Miaratna. I am so proud of you. Never forget that. Catch her hugs her daughter close. Well, I'm still new to this whole princess thing. Do you think you can ever trust me ever? Miaraya's eyes glisten as fireworks flicker into the night sky. Miaraya, let me tell you something about me. When I was your age, I was also in the Horde, as was your other mother, Adora. We were raised there as kids, Shadow Weaver had also lied to us. But it didn't change the fact that we, too, had also had enough. So, at age 18, we had left the Horde for good. We never looked back after that. We loved one another and fought with the rebellion. Then you came along. We were so happy. I could never forget that day I had you, my daughter. Your eyes were so beautiful. It still are when they opened the very first time. My heart soared like an eagle, and you bit my finger. Her mother smiles, taking Miara's chin in her hand. Is that painting in your room of you holding me as an infant? Miara purrs as she rubs her face against the palm of her mother's hand. Yes, it was painted only moments after you had opened your eyes. Petra smiles softly at her eldest daughter. I love you, mother. Even if the hood comes back, 
I will fight by your side. The princess smiles, looking up at her mother. I have a surprise for you and your other mother. Both, so stay here. Okay, I won't be gone long. The queen gets up and smiles back at her daughter before giggling and wandering off somewhere. Belly dancers come out to dance. And to Adora and Miaurai's surprise, the queen had joined in on the performance. Neither of them had known Katra had been training for several weeks to learn these dances. She had been the only queen to have done this break of 1,000 years of tradition. It was the first of its kind. Five dances are performed in total. The dancers and the queen all getting enough time between shows to change outfits. Miaraya's eyes gleam as she claps after the last dance is complete. The queen bows along with the rest of the dancers. No one cared there was war outside of the kingdom. This was a time for celebration after all. So why worry? The borders were protected. Ketra had reinforced a holographic shield to make Half Moon look invisible to the eye. The Horde wasn't giving up, however, as Shadow Weaver knew Half Moon wasn't going to give up its queen or its princess easily. She also knew the exact spot to look for the kingdom. It was hidden in plain sight, back in the Fright Zone. I will recapture the princess and her mother. Both deserters of the Horde, she will surely come to their aid. But I need someone to do the task for me. The sorceress talks to herself as she gets her shadow spies ready. Uh, you in here, Shadow Weaver, ma'am? Force Captain Lonnie intrudes in the doorway. Yes, Force Captain. State your business. Is there a reason you are intruding in my private quarters? The old witch hisses like a snake. Lord Horde requests your presence right now. Lana crosses her arms over her chest while looking at the she-demon. Very well. Go, my shadows. Search for the queen and her brat. Shadow Weaver shouts as she disappears, only to reappear before her master. Ah, nice of you to join us, Weaver. Hordak smiles, showing his red teeth, his daughter by his side. My lord and lady, to what do I owe the pleasure of being in your graces? Shadow Weaver bows to both of them. You have known about my brother, Horde Prime, for many years. I am currently working with my daughter, Tignissa. This perfect development to bring the rebellion to its knees. Hordak looks to his daughter, then back at the sorceress. Yes, my lord, I am aware. Shadow Weaver nods as she keeps her head low as a sign of respect. Are you getting any closer to Shira and her sword? They are needed to open the portal. The Lord places his hand on his daughter's shoulder. Soon, my Lord and Lady, we will have not just Shira and her sword, but something more. The sorceress beams proudly from behind her mask, eyes glowing red. Oh, and what might that be? Hordak raises his brow, looking at the wicked elf woman standing in his presence. The Queen and Princess of Half Moon. Shadow Weaver smiles wickedly. Hordak smirks as he would soon not only have Shira and her sword, but her wife and daughter as well. It was all going according to plan. Shadow Weaver's shadow spies search for the rebellion's three most greatest allies that very dark night.